boy, there's Cascade. Hey, buddy. Hey, look, there's your people out there. Come on. You wanted them. Oh, well. Hi, everybody. It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in far west Texas with Cascade the Wonder Dog, who just made me wonder why he made me come out here, and Sarah, the world's ugliest chihuahua. By the way, for those of you that wonder why I never mention Sherman, the one-eyed toothless dog anymore, he is alive. He's not doing badly. He's not doing well. He's just kind of an ill dog, and um, so we don't put him. I don't put him in this any anymore. But that has nothing to do with this video, which is about the solar water heating for the greenhouse. Well, what am I doing standing here when I'm doing that? I opened the door to come out and get up on the roof to do the video and Cascade insisted he had to start the video with me. So why don't we do this? Let's go up on the roof right now. And here I am up on the roof. What the magic of editing. I can't believe it. Anyway, we we're up here on the roof because I want to discuss with you today how I did this, the main heating system for the water in the greenhouse, for the tilapia, and also for the uh, plants. Um, it's kind of a no-brainer, but I really wasn't aware of the fact that the plants need the water to be up in the 70s in order for them to do well uh, also. So it behooved me, and no, I don't have hooves for feet now, but it behooved me to go ahead and uh, get... get uh, a main heating system and a supplemental. Now we already discussed a supplemental system. This is a main system. It is a solar hot water heating system. It's the one I took down off of the roof. Uh, in the previous video I discussed how it was one of my fails. It didn't work. And it was behind me. You can see where the wall comes up and then uh, the slope goes down there. It was there facing north northeast. This faces due south. This corner of the house faces due south. Much better positioning, and I just assumed that um, it didn't work because it was facing north. No, it didn't work because the pump had burned out. Duh! Like I said in the other video, like Homer Simpson, don't, don't! Oh well. So it probably still would be working, and if it was still working, I wouldn't be able to have done this. So here's what we did here. It's very simple. I had about 700 feet of one inch black irrigation pipe that someone had given me, actually two different people. So I was able to get a little over 600 feet of it up here in these rows that you see. Now the rows start high, there's a five degree slope here, so the rows start high. So once the uh, pump pumps the water up here, gravity will take over on its own if the pump were off. Well, of course, while the pump is on, it's still pushing, but gravity is assisting it. And it's going, as you can see, back and forth, back and forth. Now, before that guy, 300-pound guy in his mother's basement eating a ham sandwich says, Oh, but it's not straight. What a terrible job you've done. Hey, when I went to, the, to McCoy's to get all the parts I needed, they didn't have any one-inch uh, clamps. So I'm waiting on one inch clamps, but I wanted to do the video. I'll put it up nice and straight, so finish your ham sandwich and don't worry. Don't... Besides, I won't, tr I won't put up uh, uh, the comments from trolls anyway. Anyhow, up from the pump on the irrigation um, uh, tubing, zigzags back and forth and goes down. It drops down. Now, where you can see, you can't see the whole roof, but you can see here, I believe there's, uh, what, two, four, six, eight lines here. I've got room for another, oh, I'd say another 1,000 to 1,200 feet of pipe if I were to want to put it on here by simply going down that way. I've got about uh, 20 feet in that direction before I hit where I dropped it through. Uh, and at that point, then, I would be pumping back uphill. So I can put another 1,000 feet if I need to. Doesn't look like I'm going to need to, though. So let me get behind the camera for just a moment and I'll just pan this real quick for you, show you what we did inside and that'll be the end of the video because it's really quite simple. Black irrigation pipe, does it work? Well, why don't I wait and, tell, and, and, and show you inside. And we're in the greenhouse like I always like to start here at the 900 gallon main tank where we've got about 90 tilapia in here. I fished a couple of dead ones out so there's 88. Uh, the water temperature right now, I'm not sure if you can see it, but uh, 
Um, I've said before that they pretty much stop uh, eating below 60 and they'll die below 50. So we've got the temperature up and it's still climbing. That's just the ambient temperature of the water in the 900 gallon tank. However, because the water is flowing the, through the whole 4,000 gallon system, that's about what the temperature is. So you've got the main pump down there, pumps up to the ceiling and over through the tomatoes into the tanks and the tanks do their thing and goes um, down into the uh, uh, media of uh, the float beds now up here I've got the T's the first T with the blue uh, PEX pipe that's for the um, the hot water system um, that I just did the video on with the uh, turkey fryer and the 40 gallon tank so what I did is just beyond that I put another T uh, at a slight downward angle so the water wants to go into that pipe first and then just ran it across uh, for connection ease I switched over to a, um, a one inch uh, irrigation pipe just so it would be easier for me to connect the two up right there is my inline pump it's a badger pump but you could use any pump you want this pumps designed to pump pressurized hot water through your uh, your uh, domestics well through your house so that you always have hot water available at a tap and you're not running and wasting water and then it pumps it up to the uh, um, roof like uh, like I showed you now there is one mistake I made here that I do have to correct on that pipe I've got to cut that pipe and put a T in there I have to put a T with the valve the reason I have to do that is I can't figure out if or how to remove the, um, um, I can't think of the name of it right now, the one-way valve that, that stops the water from coming backwards back into the system. Uh, you can remove it, I think, but I don't know how and I can't get it out. So the easiest thing for me to do will be to put a T in there with the valve. Why do I need that? Well, last night the temperature dropped only to 38 degrees but somehow the roof uh, it did freeze a little bit and it was frozen this morning up there because the whole system was full of water the water didn't drain because there was no way to break the suction so it stood there just much like you had a um, your thumb over the over a straw and was holding um, fluid in the straw that way so by putting a valve in there I open the valve I break the suction and it'll run through the system and drop down into the tank and speaking of dropping into the tank let's take a look at that well, you can even see the shadow of the pipe coming down from the, um, the higher part of the roof. It comes down, drill a hole through the roof that I'll end up uh, plugging with expanding foam. And very simply, I just drop it down. I'm going to skip the thermometer right now, and it drops right in here. I wanted it to come in where it does, because right here is the uh, little slab that separates the upper pond from the lower pond. Both ponds have tilapia in them. They should be breeder tilapia. So I do want some of the heat to go in there initially because that, the, the, the upper tank is the coldest tank in the system because the water's had time to cool down by the time it gets there. So this way, some goes that way, some goes this way. Now I did something that I thought was pretty cool. You guys would probably say, oh yeah, I would do that myself. I had this thermometer and it has a sensor, it's a, an indoor-outdoor with a sensor. And I just drilled a little hole in that little piece of irrigation pipe. I think you can see the hole. Stuck the sensor in there and it reads my temperature. Now the temperature of the water, like I showed you, was 61 something. The temperature of the, of the ambient water temperature and what's coming in now is 73.2, whoops, hold it steady, 73.2. Uh, the pump has three speeds, a low, medium, and high. I put it on medium right now just to see how medium works. It would probably come out a couple degrees higher, hotter, maybe three or four degrees hotter if I put it on low. But the volume of water that I'm getting uh, is important because it's a 4,000 gallon system. So the water goes in here, and then it's going to go down that little, um, uh, little creek is what it's supposed to look like, into the 900 gallon tank. Uh, some of you, especially if you're into um, um, tilapia and aquaponics, you notice I do have algae here. That's an indicator that my fish are not eating because tilapia will eat um, algae. Also, I don't see any tilapia in here right now, and I did when I was digging around in here earlier. I fished out a dead one. 
and the dead one I fished out, uh, you could see his stomach was shrunk way in, so um, he, she had uh, died of starvation from not eating. So I got here just in time. So I've got the two eating systems working. The main system is this one that I just showed you. The backup is the one that I've done. That's the, the next video, uh, the previous video, the next previous video right here. So there we go. That's that. And time for me to go start another project so I can do another video for you. So let me just recap it real fast. Does the, hot, the solar hot water work? Absolutely, it's working great. It's heating the water from here doing a fine job of it. If I can get this water up, even and hold it at say 64 or 65 degrees, it won't drop below 60 overnight without the supplemental. Uh, so it works. I, I recommend it. I would do it. I would tell you to do it if you, um, um, if you have a system like this or if you just want to heat, uh, heat your plants up, your hydroponic plants, or you want to heat your aquaponic system, this works. And my uh, turkey fryer actually works better than I thought it would work. And with that, I guess, with my hat on correctly now, until the next video, it's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in far west Texas saying, see you later.